Hello dear students, uh, I have come with a small concept in physiology and biophysics. It's related to the viscosity of blood and a related effect which is the Farrell-Linquist effect. So uh, let's uh, begin with a few basics related to the biophysics. What is viscosity? What do we really understand by the term viscosity of a fluid or in this case viscosity of blood? Uh, basically, the term originates uh, from the observations of Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, it was called by Isaac Newton to be the lack of slipperiness of a fluid. So that is where the concept originated. Um, Viscosity also arises from the term viscum, means mistletoe. Romans used to apply a concoction made from mistletoe on the trees, branches of the trees, to snare the little birds. So, uh, that is where uh, a sticky material or a viscous material uh, finds its origin. So, lack of slipperiness, that's where uh, the term comes from. Now, uh, Viscosity is, how is it defined or how is it calculated? Viscosity nu uh, is uh, calculated like this. It is a ratio of shear stress upon shear rate. I will explain these terms. Uh, in case of any fluid, what is its viscosity defined as? It is a ratio of shear stress to shear rate. Let us try to understand what are these terms. What is shear rate? Shear rate is delta V by delta X. Let me explain this. Consider a fluid or in this case blood flowing through a tube, a narrow tube or a rigid tube. It flows uh, in a laminar pattern or a streamlined pattern. See, there are laminae of, the, of that fluid or laminae of blood and the lamina that is closest to the vessel wall has got the least velocity. The next lamina uh, has the greater velocity The next lamina will have even greater velocity. The central lamina will have the greatest velocity. So, this is how the fluid flows through a narrow tube in a laminar fashion. And of course, blood flows in this manner in all the vessels of the body. And we say that the blood flow has got a parabolic profile like this it flows like a parabola. Now, we are talking about the laminae of blood. You can see here that the different laminae have different velocities. Yeah, Least velocity for the lamina which is closest to the vessel wall and then other laminae are slipping past each other as you can see. So, this slipperiness is what we are looking at and the lack of slipperiness was described as the viscosity. Well, so in this case, shear rate means delta V by delta X, meaning the velocity gradient between the laminae, velocity gradient between the two laminae. You see, this lamina, the first lamina has got certain velocity and the next lamina has got a greater velocity. It is slipping over the previous lamina and therefore there is a difference in the velocity, uh, velocities of the two laminae. That is the velocity gradient we are talking about. Okay. Uh, so, that is a shear rate uh, delta V by delta X, uh, velocity gradient upon the distance between the two laminae. And what is shear stress? Shear stress is the tangential force applied 
per unit area. Force applied per unit area, that's F upon A, that's called as shear stress. Uh, now, what is this tangential force? The force applied for on a particular lamina to move it with a greater velocity with respect to the previous with respect to the previous lamina. That is the force we are looking at. The shear stress or the tangential force is the force applied on a particular lamina to move it faster as compared to the previous lamina uh, with respect to the previous lamina. So that, that is the tangential force applied per unit area. That's called as shear stress. And uh, upon shear rate, this ratio has been uh, described as uh, the viscosity. Basically, how fast the respective laminae uh, are slipping past each other. That is what we are looking at when we talk about the viscosity, the slipperiness. And the lack of slipperiness would be called as a viscosity. A greater viscosity means there would be a lack of uh, slipperiness, there would be internal resistance for the flow of laminae. So that's how it's defined in terms of physics or biophysics. Now coming to the uh, measurement of the viscosity, it is measured by an instrument called as Ostwald's uh, viscometer. And uh, what is the unit for the measurement of viscosity? The unit is poise. This is named after Poiseuille. You know Poiseuille has a formula. So uh, named after Poiseuille, it's uh, poise is the unit of viscosity. But more practical unit is a centipoise. A centipoise is 0.01 poise. That's a centipoise and that is a more practical unit for measurement of viscosities of the body fluids. For instance, water has got a viscosity of 0.01 poise or 1 centipoise. Well, this, these are absolute terms, but uh, we can measure the uh, viscosities in relative terms as well. For instance, if we consider viscosity of water as 1, as I mentioned here, uh, 1 centipoise or simply 1, then the relative viscosities would be like this. Now, let's talk about the blood, plasma and blood. So, relative viscosities of water is to plasma is to whole blood. They are 1 is to 3 is to 5. Uh, so, that's, these are the relative viscosities. Let me add a few more things here. Uh, plasma has a slightly greater viscosity because of the presence of plasma proteins. Particularly, the large proteins, macromolecules and uh, particularly uh, of particular importance is the fibrinogen that uh, provides viscosity to the plasma. And of course, whole blood has much greater velocity. What's the uh, viscosity? I beg your pardon. What is the difference between plasma and whole blood? It's the cells, hematocrit. And that is what uh, affords even greater viscosity to the whole blood. So, these are the relative viscosities of the plasma. Water is to plasma is to whole blood. Let me also uh, add one more fact here. The plasma is said to be the Newtonian fluid, a Newtonian fluid. Water and plasma are said to be the Newtonian fluids. Whereas whole blood is said to be the non-Newtonian fluid. Water and plasma are the Newtonian fluids. Whole blood is a non-Newtonian fluid. So, what's this concept of uh, Newtonian fluid or non-Newtonian fluid? Of course, the it originates from Sir Isaac Newton, of course. So, uh, 
a newtonian fluid is the one for which its viscosity remains constant viscosity remains constant over a wide range of shear rate you know uh, we have talked about the shear rate and the shear rate means the velocity gradients basically so we are talking about the velocity of flow of the fluid and the velocity of flow of the lamine with respect to each other we called it delta v or velocity gradient between the two lamine so uh viscosity remains constant over a wide range of shear rate and over a wide range of velocities if the viscosity remains constant it will be called as the newtonian fluid the viscosity does not change it remains constant so water plasma saline these are uh, newtonian fluids what is a non newtonian fluid in the case of a non newtonian fluid as uh, we are calling whole blood as the non newtonian fluid viscosity goes changing uh, with changing shear rates with changing velocities with changing shear rates uh, the viscosity goes changing viscosity gets altered such a fluid will be called as non newtonian fluid and the whole blood is a non newtonian fluid whereas plasma is the newtonian fluid so uh, that's the concept of newtonian fluid or a non newtonian fluid constant viscosity over a wide range of velocity or wide range of shearing rates that's newtonian fluid and of course again uh, the difference between the two difference between the plasma and the whole blood is the cells is the mainly the rbcs the erythrocytes and therefore that is what the presence of rbcs is making whole blood the non newtonian fluid as we will see in the subsequent discussion so uh, that's a concept of newtonian versus non newtonian fluid so let's try to understand this little further what are the factors that influence the viscosity why it gets altered in the case of whole blood so that it's called as a non newtonian fluid basically there are uh, four factors which uh, influence the viscosity velocity of uh, the flow of that fluid or uh, for now i am using the terms interchangeably velocity of that fluid as a whole or the shear rates we already uh, talked about the shear rates it's the slipperiness between the two lamine and uh, relative velocities between the two lamine so i am going to use these terms interchangeably for now uh, shear rates is the one factor that influences the viscosity uh, the other factors such as uh, hematocrit as i have already mentioned i mean what is the difference between a plasma and the whole blood is the uh the red cells or the hematocrit so another factor that influences the viscosity uh radius or diameter of the tube through which the fluid is flowing or the diameter of the vessels through which the blood flows and temperature these are the factors that are known to influence the viscosity so let's look at them one by one first one the shear rate or the velocity of fluid velocity of the blood you know there is an inverse relationship you noted in the beginning that when we define the viscosity 
it was shear stress upon shear rate so that means uh, it is inversely related there is an inverse relationship between viscosity and the shear rate let's just uh, show it with a graph let's have a graphical representation of the viscosity in centipoise plotted against the shear rate and what you observe here is the shear rates below 1 the viscosity is much higher lower the shear rate lower the velocity lesser the velocity more is going to be the viscosity so it's inverse relationship let's uh, depict it in a graph viscosity in centipoise 1 10 100 1000 and the shear rates which are uh, per centimeter per cm so uh, if the shear rate is less than 1 you see a very high viscosity but before that let me just compare the viscosities of water plasma and whole blood as i mentioned previously water plasma they are newtonian fluids so their viscosities will remain constant over a wide range of shear rate right so that's water uh, plasma constant viscosity over a wide range of shear rate the viscosity is constant now what about the blood whole blood uh, below the shear rates of one below a certain velocity of flow blood exhibits a higher viscosity so the graph will appear something like this and then as the velocity increases as the shear rates increase blood will start behaving like a newtonian fluid with a constant viscosity you can see here on this axis we have viscosity below the shear rates one or at the lower velocities of flow uh, the viscosity is much higher and then as the velocities increase as the shear rates increase uh, whole blood then maintains a constant viscosity and it behaves more like a newtonian fluid just like plasma or water now why is that why is it that at lower velocities and at lower shear rates the viscosity is higher in the case of whole blood is simply because of the RBCs you know uh, there are laminae of the plasma and between these laminae the red blood cells are moving they are moving between the two laminae as you can see in the diagram now uh, if there is a lesser velocity and uh, therefore lesser uh, or uh, lower shear rates then these rbcs will create a viscous drag between the two laminae the velocity slows down and the viscosity increases so uh, basically it's uh, velocity which is influencing the viscosity and that's primarily because of the red cells moving between the two adjacent laminae of blood uh, laminae of plasma rather in this case so that's the first factor that influences uh, the viscosity of blood now second second factor is hematocrit again there is going to be the mention of rbcs uh, 
it, it's the most important difference between the plasma and the whole blood. So almost all the factors are going to mention the uh, behavior of RBCs, how they move. Uh, well, uh, let me just add one little factor before we move on to the hematocrit is that at lower velocities, I'm just going back to the previous factor just to add one more line. At lower velocities, the RBCs are known to form the roulet. They will form the aggregates. If there is a lower velocity of blood flow and the velocity gradients between the two laminae, two adjacent laminae, that velocity gradient is less, the shearing rate is less, then the RBCs uh, are known to form the roulet. And in that case, they will create a greater viscous drag on the whole blood, on the entire flow of blood uh, through this vessel. So therefore, there will be a greater viscosity at the lower velocities and lower shear rates. As we can see in this particular graph, shear rates below 1, blood, whole blood has got a higher viscosity and then uh, with increased velocities of blood, then the whole blood behaves like a Newtonian fluid which we have already discussed. Uh, I just wanted to add this small point, at lower velocities, there is a tendency for RBCs to form the roulet and then they will create a greater viscous drag uh, for those laminae of blood, uh, viscosity will be higher. Second factor is hematocrit, you know, uh, the volume of packed uh, red blood cells, the hematocrit. The normal value is uh, between 35 to 45 percent. In any unit quantity of blood, 45 percent are cells and 55 percent is plasma. So, this hematocrit, the volume of the packed uh, cells and uh, mainly the RBCs, is going to influence the viscosity. Let's show this with another graph. You know, uh, at uh, the hematocrits of 35% uh, or 45%, the blood viscosity does not get influenced much. Let's show it with a graph. The hematocrit in percent, let's say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and uh, here we will show relative viscosity of the blood. Now, at the hematocrits of 10, 20, 30 and even 40, which is a normal, I mean 40 is a normal hematocrit, so 40, 45 percent, it will not have much of a bearing on the viscosity of blood. So, the graph would be something like this, but if the uh, hematocrit goes beyond 50, 50 percent, if the RBC count increases, for instance, uh, uh, polycythemia is a condition in which the hematocrit value will be much higher. So, 50 percent, 60 percent, 70 percent and the uh, viscosity will be much, much higher, viscosity will increase. So, hematocrit has got an important bearing on the viscosity of blood and if the RBC count is higher and there is a greater hematocrit percent, then the blood flow will be very, very sluggish. Remember, uh, viscous drag on the blood flow will be very great and the blood vessels might even get obstructed because of that slowness and viscosity of blood. Apart from this, there is uh, not only the number, number is important influencer of the viscos on the viscosity, but apart from that, there is one more factor and that is deformability of the red cells. Deformability of the red cells. Well, uh, if you have taken this point clearly, the hematocrit and its influence on the viscosity. Above 50% of the hematocrit, when it rises beyond 50%, uh, 
it has a great bearing on the viscosity as you can see the graph has increased uh, steeply and 70% hematocrit graph will be much much steeper. So, uh, second factor related to the hematocrit or related to the RBCs is the deformability of the RBCs. Not only the number is important, remember greater hematocrit as in polycythemia will have a greater viscosity and it will form sluggish blood through the vessels it can also uh, cause stasis of blood. Also, the red cell deformability, you know, normally when the red cells are flowing through the vessels, uh, smaller vessels, they have to deform themselves. They, are, they have flexible membranes and they have to deform themselves to pass through the vessels or uh, to flow through the two, uh, two adjacent laminae. The red cells have to deform themselves, they have to be flexible. Certain conditions, for example, sickle cell anemia, there is a typical hemoglobin HBS, uh, it goes into polymerization and it forms, uh, uh, it goes into gel formation. Now, in that case, A, the deformability of the red cells is lesser and B, because of that polymerization and gel formation, the viscosity of blood will increase tremendously. So, even in sickle cell anemia, one important complication is that increased viscosity of blood uh, due to the conditions I just uh, mentioned. So, that was about the RBCs, the number of RBCs or hematocrit and its influence on the viscosity and deformability of the RBCs. So, remember polycythemia, sickle cell anemia, sickle cell disease. These are important uh, clinical conditions in which viscosity has a bearing on blood flow and stasis of blood. Okay, the third factor that influences the viscosity is the diameter of the vessel. The radius or diameter of the tube or in this case the blood vessel, we are talking about the blood. Now, again an inverse relationship, again an inverse relationship, larger the diameter, uh, lesser will be the viscosity, okay. The blood can easily flow through the larger diameter, the laminae can rapidly flow, rapidly slip over each other and therefore greater the diameter lesser will be the viscosity and as the diameter goes on decreasing, the viscosity goes on increasing. So, that is uh, another influencer. But then here I want to describe one effect, a paradoxical effect so to speak, it is a paradoxical effect. It is called as Faro Lindquist effect. It is a paradoxical effect on viscosity, I mean uh, effect of diameter on viscosity of the blood. What is the effect? I said just now that if the diameter goes on decreasing, if the vessel is narrowing, the viscosity will go on increasing. Fine, because there will be a frictional resistance between the two laminae, the relative velocities will decrease and the viscosity will go on increasing, the viscous drag on the blood, fine. So, let me just show the paradox here. Up to 2 millimeter diameter, we are assuming that the diameter of the vessel is decreasing. So, up to a diameter of 2 millimeters, decrease in diameter causes increased viscosity, yeah, because narrowing of the vessel, so laminae cannot slip past each other in a, with greater velocities, there is a viscous drag on the blood. But, now listen to this part carefully, less than 2 millimeter diameter, if we have further decreased 
the diameter of the vessel and it goes below 2 millimeters diameter. Then further decrease in diameter, viscosity will not increase. It will paradoxically, it will fall, it will decrease. There is a paradoxical decrease in viscosity. This effect has been called as the Faro Lindquist effect. It is a paradoxical effect up to 2 millimeter diameter means from let us say 4 millimeters to 3 millimeters to 2 millimeters that is how we are decreasing the vessel diameter. So, up to a fall of 2 millimeter diameter decrease in diameter was causing an increase in the viscosity. But when the diameter goes below 2 millimeters now what we observe further decrease in diameter will not cause a further increase in viscosity actually the viscosity will fall paradoxically. So, this paradoxical fall in viscosity has been described as the Faro Lindquist effect. Now, what is this effect? How do you, what is the, how can you explain this effect? Uh, as I have already mentioned, if the diameter is decreasing, if the vessel is narrowing, then there will be a lack of slipperiness between the two laminae, yeah. But then, what happens when the vessel diameter goes below 2 millimeters? It is peculiar to understand. When the vessel diameter falls below that critical uh, level or crit critical 2 millimeters, now a certain change happens. See what? The, the vessel walls now will have a layer of cell free plasma. And there will be axial streamlining of the RBCs. This is what happens when the vessel diameter falls below 2 millimeters. That there will be axial streaming of the RBCs. They will be at the center of the vessel. And near the vessel walls, this is a cell-free layer of plasma. So, plasma or the cell-free uh, layer near the vessel walls and centrally flowing is the layer of red cells. They are actually streamlined and this entire thickness is that of plasma. So, what is happening here is that there is more of a plasma layer and RBC are making a central layer and flowing through the uh, central axis. And because of that, the hematocrit, uh, the effective hematocrit is less and therefore viscosity becomes less. We have discussed this that uh, polycythemia, higher hematocrit, the viscosity is higher. Anemia which I did not mention actually, lesser hematocrit, anemia, uh, the viscosity is lesser. So, even in this case, it is the relative hematocrit which is going to be less because uh, the entire thickness of this layer near the vessel wall, this is entire thickness of plasma and centrally flowing the uh, flow uh, of the RBCs. Why this effect is not seen in the case of uh, large vessels? If the diameter is larger, I mean imagine here is another vessel with a larger diameter. In that case, this effect will not be seen because then this layer of plasma becomes insignificant in terms of the entire diameter. I mean then it will be relatively a very thin layer of plasma. Okay because the vessel diameter is large and therefore this effect will not be significant for a larger diameter vessel. But below a certain diameter you can see much of the thicker layer is that of plasma, cell free plasma near the vessel wall on both sides and cells at the center. This reduces the relative hematocrit as well as the viscosity and therefore, this effect has been described as Faro-Lindquist effect. Please try to understand 
it will not be seen with large diameter vessels it will be seen with uh, vessels which are below a certain diameter a paradoxical fall in viscosity we already mentioned that major proportion of the viscosity is because of the hematocrit or cells and you can see here a thick layer of cell free plasma near the vessel walls so uh, that uh, is the ferro lindquist effect vessel diameter and its effect on the viscosity and a paradoxical fall in the viscosity in fact i may just add that near the branches the daughter vessels we can call them or the branching points there is a plasma skimming as they call it plasma is skimmed as this is a this is a this is a parent vessel and then it's a this is a daughter vessel there is a plasma skimming and rbc is at the center so viscosity would be less in these daughter vessels as well so remember diameter plays a very important role uh, in the case of smaller blood vessels uh, or and to define the viscosity in fact i may tell you that in the case of skeletal muscle the hematocrit is as low as 20% whereas the normal body average is about 35 to 45% but in the skeletal muscle blood vessels which show branchings like this and therefore skimming of the plasma and axial streaming of the rbcs the hematocrit is less in skeletal muscle blood vessels hardly 20% or so compared to the 45% elsewhere or the body average so diameter uh, and the role on or the influence on viscosity and the ferro lindquist effect which i wanted to explain and the fourth factor let's conclude this now the fourth factor is temperature another important factor uh application of cold increases the viscosity i mean lowering the temperature increases the viscosity so decrease in temperature or application of cold increases the viscosity this factor will be important for uh, let's say cutaneous and subcutaneous blood vessels uh, where ap exposure to cold will lead to the change in the viscosity of blood flowing through the cutaneous vessels or superficial vessels of the body so that's another factor that influences the viscosity uh, warming will have the opposite effect so these are the factors which influence the viscosity and uh, ferro lindquist effect which i wanted to explain